Hi, this is Phil Chandler with a short video about the Morris board. Uh, you may not have heard of the Morris board, but this is one right here. Um, the purpose of the Morris board is to enable you to raise queens consistently and continuously, if you wish to, throughout the season. Now, I've only, this is only my second year using this thing, and uh, I had only moderate success with it last year, but I think I figured out why that is now, so I'm hoping that this is going to be a successful year with it. Um, it was Kate, actually, uh, the Scottish beekeeper, who introduced me to this, and she uses it for raising Apis mellifera mellifera, the black bees, in Scotland, and this is a colony of black bees, uh, which I'm going to be using to raise queens with, uh, not necessarily from, but with, if you know what I mean. So here's the mechanism of the Morris board. It's not, um, it, it's not obvious how it's used to start with. I'm just going to give it to you in a shortened, edited form, but um, hopefully it'll become obvious. Now this colony here is really not strong enough yet to use this board properly, but they're, they're building up nicely, so I'm just going to put the, the board in place. Now, the board consists of a, essentially the same as a crown board, it's got beast space on both sides, there and there, and it will sit um, simply over the, over the existing um, frames. This is a polystyrene hive, of course, and uh, I've made this board to fit both polystyrene and wooden hives. Now there are a number of moving parts to this uh, board which, which puts some people off, but it's not actually that difficult to build. You can see there's a, an entrance up here, a, a, a rotating um, piece up here, um, and there's another one at the back here. Similarly, I won't bother to open it because I've only got two hands. And you can see there's two squares, rectangles of queen excluder in the middle. Okay, that's the essential element on that side. Right, we'll put it flat onto the hive now. Um, it's slightly smaller than the uh, polystyrene hive, but that's okay, you'll see it still works. Right, now then, the important bit here is that there are, at the front end, this is the front, you can see where the bees are down here, there are three possible entrances which can be selected at will, and they are conveniently labelled, uh, well, these two are labelled A and B, and they go into, the, above the um, queen excluder, they go into the what's going to be the upper box, which is waiting here right now for me to put on. Okay, so this would normally be the main entrance because it goes under the board and straight into the hive. So when this board goes into use, I'm going to have to divert these guys into using this entrance here, which basically means blocking this entrance, and then they'll they'll naturally go up looking for some way in, and this is what they'll find. Right, so that's the main entrance. That's in, in, in uh, non-queen rearing use, as it were. This one would be open, okay? Uh, but that one can be closed. Now, the other element to this board is this sliding piece here. This can be used, this would be inserted um, in order to close off the access of the bees to the top box. And you'll notice that this top box here is divided into two. It's got five frames either side of a central divider, and that central divider completely seals each chamber. So there are two chambers here, uh, we we'll call them A and B, and you can see there's, there's actually a few bees in the chamber B at the moment. So, um, so this is a standard brood box. Uh, it takes standard frames. Here's a standard frame. This one's been drawn about a bit. And so five standard frames each side. The, there are no entrances to this box whatsoever. Um, it's completely sealed all round so that there are two completely separate chambers. And you'll notice that the board itself has a divider down the centre which means that each of these two chambers can be accessed entirely separately. So I'm, at the moment I'm going to take this slide out and attempt to explain the action. First of all I have to put the top box in place. Okay, so here's the top box in place. I'm going to close up the entrances so I can attempt to demonstrate how it's used. Obviously the top box would, in normal use, have closures, and I've made closures with um, bee space underneath so as 
and mainly so as not to crush bees when I close them up because that was my first version of this uh, had flush fitting tops and I suddenly accidentally crushed some bees. Okay, so there's the top boards in place. You'll notice there's a hole for a feeder and feeding is quite important with this system. So, in normal use, um, once this hive is ready, in other words, once the bees have expanded and put, um, and w once they've got bees up here, upstairs, as well as downstairs, which they haven't at the moment, um, they will be strong enough to start using for the Morris Board queen rearing system. Now, the first option will be, of course, to close the bottom entrance and open this entrance, and then this will be their normal way in and out of the hive. So, here's how it works. This is um, entrance A. Here it is, entrance A. That entrance is above the uh, follow of, above the um, um, queen excluder, should I say, and it gives access only to chamber A. All right. So the five frames on this side of the box. Likewise, entrance B only gives access mm. to the five frames on this side of the box. So we've got two complete separate entrances. One in the middle, which doesn't access either of these top boxes, but only accesses the brood chamber below. Okay, are we clear? <sighs> right, so... Um, the bees will normally be used to using this main entrance. We'll call this entrance C. They will normally be used to using entrance C to get in and out of the box. That goes straight into the brood chamber, no problems. When it comes time to raising queens, however, we're going to take our frame with the grafts on and we're going to take out this central frame here. When I say grafts I mean the, the, the cells that you're raise, rearing queens on, whatever system you use. I mean I personally prefer the Nico box because I don't really like grafting, I don't like poking around um, tiny lava that I can hardly see. So I use the Nico system which means the queen lays directly into the queen cup or what becomes the queen cup then they go onto frame and that will go into the middle of this box up here. This box will have, by that time, a lot of bees in it and it will also, I will probably have actually lifted up a frame of sealed brood from the box below to put into this box to make sure that there are plenty of nurse bees up here because that's what we want. Okay, so we have to pretend that this frame here, which is just an old brood frame, this frame here has our queen cells on it. So we put them into this box we put the lid on and then we close entrance C, which is the main entrance, and we open entrance A, which goes into this box. Remember, it's above the queen excluder. Okay? This means that all the foraging bees, having been used to coming into to entrance C, uh, not being able to find entrance C anymore before, because we've closed it, will now be forced to use entrance A. So that means the entire foraging force will actually come into entrance A. Meanwhile, if you remember the sliding bit, the sliding bit goes into this entrance. All right? And as we slide it in gently like this, what it does, and it stops there, and there should be a couple of little pins there, which will eventually get put back in place. In that position, it's closed off the bees' access to the bottom box, or in fact, you could say it's closed off the bees being able to get up to the top chamber through the queen excluder. Um, now, the reason for that is, will become hopefully apparent in a moment, but with that in position, and this entrance open, all the other entrances closed, the, all the bees will pile into this entrance here, above the queen excluder. They can't get past this board here because it completely seals off the queen excluder. So they're forced to collect in this box here. This has only got five frames. It's going to get crowded. Crowded is exactly what we want for re rearing queens. Okay. So once this box is really crowded with bees, um, they are going to find themselves also effectively queenless because the queen pheromone can't get upstairs through the queen excluder anymore as a bee come to help thank you bee um, the queen pheromone can't get through this sealed um, um, plastic plate here so they are going to think 
as, in as much as bees think. They're going to find themselves effectively queenless. They can't smell their queen anymore. There's a big mass of bees in this box here, very crowded. There's nurse bees in there because we put them in there, remember? And also all the flying bees are, are having to come into this entrance. Crowded chamber, that is the trigger for them to start rearing queens. So effectively what we're forcing them to do is to start rearing queens under the emergency response straight immediately because they can't detect their queen pheromone. It's as if the queen's been removed from the hive, okay? So under emergency response, they are going to get busy, we hope, um, on our frame with the queen cells on, we're go they're going to get busy raising queens and we're going to leave them like that for up to 24 hours and in that 24 hours they will start, if, if we've done everything correctly and all the conditions are correct, they will have started to build um, queen cells and, and of course the purpose of the feeder hole here is to better put a standard feeder on top and that will help to encourage them to uh, feel as if they're you know they're, they're wealthy in terms of stores and food which will help to get them busy making queens so they're starting to raise queens under the emergency response now it is pretty much taken as read in beekeeping circles that the ideal way of re rearing queens, the ideal state for bees to rear queens, is the supersedure response. And the Morris board makes use of this by allowing us to induce the supersedure response, which is the response by which bees replace their queens when they find their ailing. Okay, now to induce the supersedure response, we need to let them smell the queen again. So, because remember, supersedure takes place in the presence of the queen. So all we do is very gently, and this is, remember this is going to be covered with bees, we gently remove this slide and that exposes the bees to the queen pheromone from the box below. Now, by this time they'll have started raise, rearing queens in this box upstairs and the queen pheromone from below will trigger the supersedure response. So they'll go, oh right, it's supersedure time, that means we have to feed these larvae really, really well uh, to make them nice and fat, to make the best possible queens we can because we're superseding our old queen, okay? They don't know that the queen's downstairs and quite happy laying as if nothing's happened. In fact, she doesn't even really know what's going on here at all, to be honest. So, okay, so now we've induced the supersedure response. The bees are still using entrance A to come in and out and then at the point where our cells have been sealed uh, either usually the day after they've been sealed or a couple of days before they're due to emerge we can come along and we can take the cells from this um, box and put them into mating nukes ready to go now optionally you can close this um, entrance a and open entrance c to let the bees just go back to using the bottom box it doesn't really matter once you've induced the supersedure response i don't think um, one little thing i forgot to mention was right at the back here there's yet another entrance which is similar to entrance c in other words it's under the um, queen excluder and that is to allow drones d for drones to escape um, once you've closed the front entrance, because remember, <laughs> drones can't get through a queen excluder and uh, it gives them an ex a way out because we don't want to trap drones, do we? Okay, so the point was of having two boxes um, it, the, and two entrances means that having removed our queens from here um, and put them into mating nukes, we can now immediately do exactly the same thing as we did with uh, entrance A uh, by using entrance B. So we can actually switch from side to side. In fact, you don't even technically have to wait until those queens are removed from box A before starting to use box B. So you can, I think you can see now using this method, you can set up a very efficient, continuous queen rearing system uh, by simply switching from one side of this box to the other uh, week after week. And well, we'll see how it goes this year. I, I didn't have as much success with it last year as I'd hoped. I did manage to raise some queens from it, but not as many as I'd hoped. But I think that was because I didn't have a strong enough colony and um, I wasn't completely um, using the entrances correctly. So we'll see how it goes this year. I'm hoping that I can raise lots of black queens using the system this year. And these black bees, as you can see, are 
really quite gentle and well behaved and this is the sort of characteristic that we would like to pass on to the next generation and so there it is the Morris board uh, if you fancy making one uh, I'd love to hear how it goes uh, I think it's a terrific system for raising queens minimal interference to the bees a uh, nice um, easy system for switching from one side to the other and uh, what could be better really let's hope it works